difficulties. Be darn. We are drawing a crowd. Here's the beautiful capital in March. And the crowd is building. Put you back on the
to the south steps of Mount Diablo folks. We got our Central Valley crew. If you're Save watching, remember, Save link people, tag people, Save bring folks in Save to check this school. out. If they can't be Save with us here, school. jump Save on virtually. Say hello. Save Save bring folks school. into the Save rally. Save the capital is looking Save beautiful. It's a beautiful Save day for after school funding. Again, our Los Angeles contingent up all the way on that bus. Jen hard at work here, finalizing our visits. And the band is gonna come through. Oh, yeah.
Yes. A picture of me live while I'm Facebooking live. Getting things set up. Stay with us. Stay with us, viewers. Pardon. Quick movement. Okay, folks. So while they're getting everything set up, I'll just say a quick hello. Please tag, share, get people engaged to watch, and the show's getting...
crying. I was like, where, where's this coming from? Because all of you are here to celebrate, right? And to fight for after school programs, right? Is that why you're here? That's what I'm talking about. So I'm super excited. You are one of 300 participants representing over 70 districts, 50 programs that have come together to advocate for out of school time. Can we get, give it up for yourselves? I say, give it up for yourselves. That's what I'm talking about. So let's hear who's here today. We're going to do a little roll call. Is that okay? Yeah. All right, all right. So we're going to start it off. San Diego Oceanside, you here? All right, all right. Hold it down. Santa Ana, Santa Ana, you here? Fullerton, Irvine? All right, all right. Long Beach. Long Beach in the building? Long Beach, Torrance, Covina, Woodland, Cerrito, Los Angeles, you here? Oh, 
Five more Merced, Riverbank, you here? That's what I'm talking about. Sacramento, Elk Grove, Fair Rocks, you here? Sacramento, 916, got to give it up. Yuba City, Marysville, you here? Chico. All right, all right, let's give it up for them in the ass. Let's go. Everybody, yes, yes. San Jose, Los Altos, Redwood City, Santa Rosa, San Rafael. We are excited to have you all here. Oakland, is Oakland in the building? Bay Area. Oakland and Bay Area, yes, yes. We are glad to have you here. We want to uh, thank you for coming out. This is about you this morning. So today we're going to get fired up. Fired up. Let's go. Jorgensen. Um, I have the great honor to serve as the CalSAC Executive Director. Really proud to be here with you all today. Um, two years ago, your voice was heard loud in the Capitol that we needed an increase for after school funding. We won an increase, but it was not enough. And what we have now in our state is a new governor. And Governor Newsom has said that he is a champion for after school. That's right. But he believes that every child in the state of California should have an after-school program. What do we think about that? Yeah. And what do we say to Governor Newsom for being a champion for after-school? Yeah. Come hear us. So we love him for that. And we know that there's, there's still the need for him to put money for after-school. He can't just say that he supports it, right? So today we are here to call on our legislators, to call on the governor, to stand by their promise to our children and youth. That young people need support after school hours, before school hours, during the summer. And that it's critical to their health, their safety, their enrichment, to their success in school, work, and life. So we want them to be about it, which I heard someone in the crowd, be about it. If you're going to support it, you got to put your money where your mouth is. Where your mouth is. That's what our people said out in the audience. <laughs> so we also learned yesterday that President Trump eliminated funding for 21st century. So we're calling on our wonderful governor who loves after school to decide if he's going to... Are you going to stand with the children and youth and our families in California? And where do we believe he's going to stand? He's going to stand with us because we know he knows the value of after school programs. So we have a really great lineup of speakers. What we also have, in addition to our governor, who's a champion for after school, we have a number of legislators that are standing with us. And these are high level folks who have our back in the Capitol. And so we believe that they will. They will um, <laughs> stand with us, be a voice for us in the Capitol. And so with that um, said, we are going to invite up our newly elected superintendent of public instruction, who has been a longtime champion for after school, who has stood with us on this stage. We want to invite him to... Folks, she's, hey listen, she's so excited. She's never seen such dabbing their brothers before, so she got so excited, she called him up herself. Now, 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 before I introduce the superintendent, I gotta correct Nate. Nate didn't call for Linwood. Is Linwood in the house? And we know Compton's in the house right here, so give it up for Compton. There you go, Compton in the house. Look, folks, Makai Ali, president of the Board of Education in Compton, it's the honor and the privilege to stand before you and introduce someone who I believe in, someone who I believe is a stratospheric force in California education policy, someone who will deliver on behalf of children, and someone who will continue to champion what we know is best, and that's to erect bridges and help the lost, the last, and the least among us. Folks, we're here for a very worthy cause, 
and that cause is simple, to impact the lives of young folks with respect to the after-school program. If you believe in the after-school program and full funding of it, give yourselves a resounding round of applause. We understand that after-school programs provide enrichment, safe and supportive environments that promote social and emotional learning. We believe that it nurtures and it sparks knowledge within children. He too believes that. Mr. Thurman is a selfless public servant, someone who understands that the California dream just didn't start in Richmond, it just didn't start in Compton, but it starts on every single street in this beautiful state. From his early political days on the Richmond City Council to his time on the school board in West Contra Costa Unified School District, Tony is focused on uplifting and improving services for foster youth at-risk children, as well as consistently champion student after-school counseling, music, and athletic programs. He's carried this passion, commitment, and ability to lead the impactful change to the legislature, where he authored legislation that successfully expanded the free lunch program, as well as bilingual education, improved family access to early education, and shifted millions from prisons to schools which derailed the school to prison pipeline. Most recently, most recently he was elected in what I believe is one of the most landmark historical elections in California history. He became the 28th superintendent of public instruction and I'm enthusiastic and ecstatic to see that he will continue his public service advancing the cause of public education in this state. Folks, please, Give a resounding round of applause to my good friend and the distinguished gentleman, Tony Thurman. Mm -hmm. Let's put our hands together for our brother, pastor, school board member, brother Ali, representing y'all. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Buenos dias. Nehoma. Power to the people. It is an honor to be with you and to lend my voice uh, with my colleagues who are these great authors bringing forward these bills to speak on helping our kids. Let me ask you this question. Do you love our young people? Let me hear you say, yeah. yeah. Will you fight for their after school opportunities? Say, oh yeah. oh yeah. That's it, that's all that has to be said. Drop the mic. <laughs> it's a fact. He said, don't go on anymore. <laughs> I heard that. It is a fact that our after-school programs provide safe places, structured activities, enrichment, important learning. They are talking about how STEM and STEAM sometimes happen in the best ways during the after-school programs. The after-school programs were where I hung out. That was my spot. That's where I got help when I needed help with homework. That's where I had structured activities to help me be safe and to help me grow and learn as a student and as a leader. And we need to provide those same opportunities for all six million of California students. So let us do this. And, and let us thank all the organizations that do the important work. Sometimes just putting a few pennies together, we've got to make sure that they have the dollars to provide the proper balances and the ratios of staff to student, the resource, the materials. If you're an organization serving youth, let's give them a round of applause. Thank you for what you do. And on behalf of California's six million students, together, the fight continues for great after-school programs. Thank you for being here, and thank you for what you do. And put your hands together for all the young people, all the future senators and governors who are out here today. Because that's who it's all about. Thank you, everybody. Can we give it up one more time? So now we have one of our young people going to come up and introduce our next speaker, Charlene, who attends the Art After School program. Will you come up? Yes, let's give it up for Charlene. Hello, everyone. My name is Charlene Alexander Hernandez. I love the After School program because it helps me with my leadership, my leadership skills, my confidence, and how to express my passion. I can do all of this because we have academic help and awesome enrichment clubs like sign language, French, STEM, and dance that help me shape my future. I am happily to introduce Assembly Speaker Anthony Rendon from Lakewood.
Thank you. Good morning. I am really happy to be here. One more ovation for Cheryl Lynn, please. So Cheryl Lynn was in my office a little while ago. She was talking about all that she's learning through after school programs. You know, again, she mentioned the fact that she's doing dance. She's learning hip hop and step. She's doing languages. She's doing uh, French and sign language. And when you, yay. And when you think about uh, all that she's learning and you think about the fact that she has a, a place to go uh, after school, after the sort of regular school hours, and I'm looking out and I see uh, uh, my, my friends here from the district, uh, from Maywood, I lost him now. Uh, we have a council member, uh, I'm sorry, a school board member from Linwood. We have folks from my districts, folks from all 80 assembly districts and all 40 Senate districts talking today about the importance of after school programs. And throughout this state, up and down this state, we know what happens when kids have a, a, a place to go, a safe, nurturing environment to go after the school day ends. We know about the, the extent to which they stay interested in school. We know about the extent to which in the morning when they wake up, they think about the school day and they think about what they're gonna do. And they think about what they're going to do between say eight o'clock and three o'clock but also what they're going to do after when they're going to take robotics classes when they're going to take language classes like sherlyn does when they're going to take uh, dance classes and these physical education classes and how that pre prepares them not only for the school day but prepares them for life and how it helps them to think about things like discipline helps them to think about things like like their passions and things that they want to embrace here in Sacramento, we are proud of the fact that we have had record funding in K-12 education. We're proud of the fact that we have had record funding in terms of early childhood education, but we know that's not enough. We know that after-school programs are essential. After-school programs are essential to everything that we do and everything that we want to be as a state. So I'm proud to be here. I'm proud to be with all of you. I'm proud to be with all the activists. I'm proud to be here with my colleagues and we're gonna fight for more after school funding. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, thank you. Um, Speaker Rendon, we really appreciate your support. I wanna next welcome up Tracy from Project Life Impact in San Bernardino to introduce our next champion. Good morning. I'm Tracy Oliveri Vasquez. I work for Project Life Impact in San Bernardino, California. I work in after school because it is my God-given calling to impact the lives of students by empowering them with the resources and capabilities that set them up for a lifetime of success. I am honored this morning to invite my senator onto the stage. She is the chair of the Senate Education Committee and the chair of the Women's Caucus. She is a champion for after school because as I've heard her say before and many times that she has visited our district, she was a single parent and utilized after school services. She is truly the sentiment of most of the parents in our programs. Please welcome to a stage and give it up for Senator Connie Leva. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. Good morning. How's everybody doing? Well, as the Women's Caucus Chair and the mother, mother of twin daughters, I know how important after school education is. Do you love your after school program? Yes! Where are my working parents? Do you love the after school program? You can't work if you don't have an after school program. I remember minimum days. I'm like, 1.30? Why in God's name would you let my child out at 1.30? I'm still working at 1.30. So without these programs, parents can't work and contribute to their family's income. And our young people learn so many valuable things from after doing homework to arts to music. I, where, do we have any of our educators here from the ACES programs? Any of our folks that do? Thank you. Thank you for 
what you do because you are truly helping those of uh, our, our students of tomorrow are our leaders. Our students of today are our leaders of tomorrow. I am so excited that a couple years ago we were able to secure $50 million in ongoing funding for after school. <laughs> Woo -hoo! But we have more work to do, and I just want you to know that I will be there fighting for this bill, which is going to be carried by and championed by Assemblymember Wendy Carrillo. She will do, yes. You give her a big round of applause when she comes up here. Yes. She will do a fabulous job. I will be there to help her every step of the way because this is critically important to all of our parents, all of our children, and really to the future of California. So thank you for what you do every day. Thank you for having me. Enjoy your day at the Capitol and fight on. you be excited up here. So now we have our next uh, speaker who's gonna introduce our next speaker, uh, Raymond, who is uh, an alumnus from um, the after school program out in LA's Best, if I'm not, if I'm correct, right? Yeah. LA's Best in the room. And I met this gentleman last night, he was dressed sharp, so I'm looking forward to seeing him again this morning. He's gonna come up and introduce our next speaker. Let's give it up for Raymond Moore. How's everyone doing? Yeah. Fired up. Yeah. Let's go. My name is Raymond Mora. My after school program helped me to develop the willingness to ask questions, the desire to explore, and the confidence needed to know that I can find the answers to anything that I want to find the answers to. I am proud to introduce assembly member who represents the neighborhood I grew up in, where I attended an after school program at Griffin Avenue Elementary School. She is the author of AB 1725 to save ACES programs across California. Please join me in welcoming Assembly Member Wendy Carrillo. Griffin Elementary School. Hi, good morning. My name is Wendy Carrillo. I am proud to represent the 51st Assembly District, which includes the communities of East LA, Northeast LA. Proud home of LA's best. Thank you so much for coming up here and advocating for after school programs. And I love a sign that says after school and summer school, which is so needed in our communities. Um, let me begin by saying that AB 1725 is something that I am so honored to be able to author and introduce in our, in our state legislature. Assembly Bill 1725 will provide $113 million for after-school programs. These are, this is funding that is critical to our communities, it is critical to our students, to our families. And let me share a story of a young girl that I met just last Christmas. We were at a toy giveaway at, um, in Lincoln Heights, and this little girl, we were sitting together on the bench. I asked her, what do you want to be when you grow up? And she said, I want to be a teacher because then I know that I will be learning every day. Mm. This desire, this willingness to learn, to have an open mind, to know that education is her ticket, her ability to be whatever she wants to be in life that by being a teacher, not only because she's probably had really good teachers in her life that make her want to be a teacher herself, but that she wants to continue learning and she wants to teach other children just like herself. Many of you probably have really great teachers, right? I had really great teachers growing up as well. I had a great after school program when I was growing up in uh, Boyle Heights and City Terrace. I went to Harrison Elementary in City Terrace. And we had an after school program that taught me how to play the violin. And from third grade up until 10th grade, as I was sharing with uh, Senator Connie Leva, who was just up here, I played the violin. And these programs have been cut from our school system so that many children today don't have those opportunities that I did while growing up. But you know what? I'm here now and I will be your champion, your fighter, to make sure that we're bringing the money necessary back to our communities. 
so that other kids have an opportunity to learn to play the violin, so that they learn to play any instrument that they want. So if they want to learn to dance, they can. If they want to learn sign language, they can. If they want to learn another language, they can. If they want to be better at math or English or science, they can. That's why we're here today. So thank you for coming. Let me just share a few words in Spanish as well. Porque hablo español. <laughs> Buenos días. Buenos días. Yo soy Wendy Carrillo, represent, represento el Distrito 51 del Este de Los Ángeles y el Noreste de Los Ángeles. Muy orgullosa de estar aquí con ustedes hoy, podiendo uh, representar el valor de los programas de uh, después de escuela, que son tan importantes para nuestros estudiantes y nuestras familias. También tengo el gran honor de ser la autora del, uh, de una parte de la legislación que es 1725, que va a traer 113 millones de dólares a nuestros programas después de escuelas escolares. Porque el Estado de California tiene que hacer un enfoque en la educación, no solamente del kinder al 12, pero también lo que pasa después de clase. Porque muchos de nuestros estudiantes tienen padres de familia que trabajan más de dos trabajos, quizás. Pero que también necesitan una oportunidad de poder aprender Uh, más matemáticas, ciencias, inglés, tener la oportunidad de uh, poder bailar o tener un programa como yo tuve cuando yo era niña, que aprendí a tocar el, el violín desde el tercer grado hasta el décimo grado. Estos programas ya no existen, pero con la ayuda de la legislatura, de los senadores y asamblistas y el gobernador, vamos a poder poner el dinero y los fondos necesarios para que estos programas sean parte del currículo de nuestros estudiantes de cada sistema de educación a través del Estado. Y sé que Alice Best, que está aquí hoy, es parte del Distrito de Los Ángeles. Gracias por estar aquí. Espero que tengan un día divertido hablando con todos los legisladores adentro de este edificio. Pero sepan que yo crecí en esta misma comunidad que ahora represento. Soy la mayor de cinco hermanas. Todas hemos hecho un programa después de escuela. Y todas nos hemos graduado, hemos ido al colegio y hacemos nuestros padres muy orgullosos por el trabajo que estamos haciendo. Eh, quiero que sepan que en mí y en mi oficina van a tener una, no quiero decir pelonera, pero casi, ¿verdad? Eh, una campeona que va a poder representar los valores de ustedes porque yo misma los he vivido y yo mismo los tengo así que vamos a seguir trabajando vamos a pasar esta legislatura vamos a traer más de 113 millones de dólares a nuestras escuelas para que nuestros estudiantes puedan seguir, seguir adelante muchas gracias Thank you. champions in the Capitol. We don't win increases in funding without champions out in our community. So let's hear another round of applause. So to introduce our next speaker, I want to welcome up Mia, who attends After School All-Stars in LA at Alliance College Ready Middle Academy. So welcome up. Hello everybody. Um, hi. Hi, <laughs> um, hi Selma. <laughs> um, so basically my name is Mia Mandujano and I live in South Central Los Angeles. I attend, yeah, South Central, woo! Okay, so I attend a small charter school, ACRM number four, um, in South Central Los Angeles. And basically, I love after school all Stars. well, sorry, after school, but I am a part of All Stars, which is an after school program. And I love after school because I am provided a safe environment in which I can fulfill several things that will ultimately impact my learning in a positive way. So we are provided like, I'm provided this leadership position. It's awesome and I'm like doing things that I've never done before. I'm also a part of this program, Girl Scouts. Have you heard of it? Woo! Yeah, um, Girl Scouts is awesome. I'm learning so many things about leadership and how to be like an awesome person in my community. and. Um, it's pretty awesome. So, without further ado, I'm super excited to introduce the chair 
of the Senate Bu Budget Committee and my Senator of Los Angeles, Holly Mitchell. My colleague, Assemblywoman Carrillo, said, you know you she's from South Central if she says South Central as opposed to South LA. I was, that's right, South Central in the house. Welcome to your state capitol. I am so glad to see you here. And we want to see you here again and again and again. As the Assemblywoman's bill goes through the process, you can't just come one day. You gotta come back for committee hearings. You gotta meet with your assembly people and the senators in their districts. And you have to stay engaged to make sure that everybody in this building, all 120 legislators, the governor, everyone knows what's important to you and your community. And I know it's important from two perspectives. First of all, I'm a mom. And if it were not for the STAR program at Carthay Center Elementary School, when my son was there and I was a nonprofit exec and then a candidate for public office, I don't know what I would have done, to be perfectly honest. That's where he got to see lizards and snakes and stuff I wouldn't go have and take him to see. <laughs> That's where he got to not only get homework assistance, but have creative opportunities at the end of his day. It's so important. I traveled to China with the legislature a number of years ago, and their school week is actually six days. They go to school Monday through Saturday. But a good chunk of their day is spent in an after-school structured program that allows them to experience the arts. And so it's so important to make sure that it's not all reading, writing, arithmetic, and science but that you're supported and nurtured and given the opportunity to learn how to play the violin. I also know how important it is from a second perspective, because I'm so ancient, I didn't have an after-school program to go through. I'm from the generation of the latchkey kids, right? All right, latchkey kids, we survived. It wasn't pretty, but we made it. So my after-school program consisted of Flipper, how many of you have seen Flipper on TV? Flipper, Flipper. He's a friend to you and me. Flipper, all right. Flipper and a can of SpaghettiOs or a fried salami sandwich. I grew up in an apartment. We lived in apartment number nine. And my job when I came home from school was to use my key and go in the house and then knock on Mrs. Green's door, who was apartment seven. So when I was very young, Miss Green would make the SpaghettiOs or fried salami sandwich because I wasn't allowed to turn on the stove for safety. And as I got over, I had to check in with Miss Green so Miss Green knew I was home. Miss Green was wonderful. God rest her soul. I love her. But that was not an enrichment experience, right? It just wasn't. But it was what my mother could, the patchwork quilt that moms and dads put together to try to make sure our kids are safe, right? And out of harm's way. What I did have the experience was for the summer program was the Y. And it was in the summer program during, at the Y that I would thrive, where I did get to take music and dance and swimming. So I do know firsthand from not having it myself, for being able to rely on it for my own son, how critically important enrichment programs are. I had the opportunity to tour LA's best program at Manchester Elementary School uh, during interim. And I toured the program with Ms. Brown, the school principal, and I saw amazing work. What stuck with me the most were the amazing counselors and teachers. Some teachers who spend their full day teaching and then spend their evenings as leaders in these after school programs. I saw young former students who now come back and work in the after school program in the elementary they attended in their very own community. So please know that the vast majority of us here understand the value of your work and we honor you for the work you do. We get it, but it's up to you to help us help you by being here today, talking to as many legislators as you can, bringing your signs, and telling your personal stories. Statistics are great, and the administrators at the after school programs will do that. LA's Best brings me beautiful statistics, but we're people too, and what we remember are your personal stories. So don't be shy. Tell your personal story like the assemblywoman did. Talk about your favorite class, 
the favorite counselor, the favorite experience you have in your after school program, because that's what legislators will remember, and that's what will help us get the funding you need to continue and grow and expand. Welcome to your state's capital. Thanks, everybody. Can we give it up one more time for Senator Holly Mitchell? Just reminded through all the personal experiences I had of being a product of after school program, it is about the exposure. And I have to live by this quote that says, as much as it's about you, it's not about you. So all of you who are out here who are advocating for our young people, we have to keep that in mind. As much as it's about us, it's not about us, it's about our young people. And as I brought my daughter here today to see that this is what it takes, it takes a village to raise our children. I almost said amen, because I thought I was at church. All right, so <laughs> our next speaker, we have uh, Ray, who's a, a young person who is gonna come up with a higher ground. Can we get up for our young person, Ray? Yeah. How y'all feel this morning? Y'all doing good? Yeah. That's cool, all right. All right, I'm Ray Kennedy. Um, I love after school because I like being with the children. I like um, being a part of their educational growth and you know, any growth I can see, you know, I like kids growing, seeing kids grow up safe, you know. I'm coming from the Oakland, you know, he's, you know, shout out the A area, or, you know. <laughs> yeah, um, I see too many kids, like, get shot, and I don't like that, you know. So, for me to be in after school to see these kids grow, and see them learn, and then look at me, and then if they ain't got a father, they look at me. Like, I don't, like, I'm not going to raise them, I ain't paying no child support, you know that. But, uh, <laughs> you know, if I can help them, you know, if I can show them, like simple division, simple addition, like any of that, you know, like anything they need help on, like I would do that. It's cause like I, I have my father, he didn't have his, but he showed me how that affected him and how it could affect anybody else. So that's why I love me some after school, y'all. <laughs> without further ado, I would like to welcome the chair assembly budget, uh, chair of the assembly budget committee and assembly manager, Phil Tink. Can we give it up for Ray? Thank you. It's so great to see everybody here. I think I, I've been to this rally the last three years, and it gets bigger every year. So thank you for coming up from all over the state and visiting us in Sacramento. Uh, later today, I'm going to be driving back to San Francisco and probably grabbing my kids from after school. Uh, I have a third grader and a sixth grader, and you know, you know as, a, as a working parent, there is no way I could be up here without the after school programs that they have. And they are absolutely amazing, as you all know. I mean, as well as, you know, playing violin, my older daughter got to take surfing, got to take a surfing class this last year, which is, a, which is pretty incredible. Um, it is just an amazing opportunity, all the, all the skills and development, but just from, from the most basic point of view for us as families, it's really peace of mind. Because we know that this is a safe place, this is a, a nice environment for our children, they like to be hanging out there, and they really get the opportunity to kind of do their homework, learn something, play activities, play sports, get outside. Senator Mitchell's right. If, if my kids were at home, they probably would be, you know, watching TV or just, you know, go, goofing around. So this is so important. You know, I'm so proud the last couple years we were able to really add some more money in the budget for the first time, I think two years ago, really for the first time, I think in about over a decade that we were able to get uh, many of the after school programs just a little more funding. And I could just hear the reverberation when I would get home in San Francisco, because it meant for the first time, some folks got raises, some folks got a little more resources, and you really could see 